Hey everyone, this is Nemo and welcome to this crash course on Press the Shop themes. So first off, who is this course for? Well, basically everyone. Um, unlike my previous course in Press the Shop modules, this one is a lot simpler and basically any merchant with a minimum knowledge of HTML and CSS should be able to follow it. Also, it's shorter and has been thought to help you get started modifying your Press the Shop template. We will be of course using the default one, so bear in mind if you have a third party template, especially if it's a Leo theme or a template monster one, that um, things might be a lot different. That said, this crash course will help you get the ball running if say you're wondering how a Presta Shop theme is structured or how to make uh, simple modifications and ultimately understand how it works and how to extend it. So. If you are a merchant who doesn't want to spend hundreds of bucks hiring a professional to do some simple modifications, well then this course is for you. Or even if you're a front-end developer who is first venturing into Presta Shop, then this course is also for you. And even for who, maybe why not, has always worked as back-end developer, again, with Presta Shop, but would like to know more about themes. So yeah, again, everyone, really. Just as a brief mention, the course is strictly focused on the technical side, okay? So it's not about configuring Presta Shop or theme options or things like that, uh, as that topic is already covered in my um, 1.6 101 series, which you can find at the following link. Now, before getting to the real thing, let's see which tools we will be using and how. So my workhorse is called Sublime Text 2 and it's a pretty simple actually text editor which however has some really really nice feature uh, features and first off it has a syntax highlighter library for a smart which you can see in action here and that's the template engine press the shop uses it's really really helpful to discern uh, control structure like ifs for each etc from actual HTML. Um, the Smarty Syntax Highlighter, however, doesn't come out of the box, um, but you can get and install it for free if you just Google it. It's really, really easy to find. I will um, leave a link on screen right now in any case. Then it has a really nice text expansion feature. So I basically save snippets and associate them to uh, say a keyword. For example, I have PS text, and then I hit tab and bam, expand it. I get a full code. In this case, it's for creating translatable strings in Press the Shop. Okay? Uh, that said, any editor is fine, really. Sublime is not free, so if you have a free alternative with Smarty Syntax highlighting, of course, feel free to use it. Then the second fundamental tool, if you want to get into template modifications, is Chrome Developer Tools. And it's accessible in every Chrome uh, hitting F12. Now it's a bit uh, cumbersome here because my recording screen is small, but um, you can see it in action. It's pretty useful, it has um, plenty of features. And I know there is Firebug in Firefox, which in some cases we'll see comes in handy and uh, Edges or Internet Explorer is one, but um, the Chrome Dev Tools is my first pick usually, so I'm gonna use this. And um, we will use it to find the content we wanna edit, add some live CSS modifications and so on. Also, as a rule of thumb, um, whenever modifying a template, reach the back office, advanced parameters, performance, and make sure you disable cache as it might get stuck and you might be editing things without seeing results on screen in that case. And this can be a really frustrating experience, honestly. Um, so always bear in mind to keep cache disabled when developing. In any case, Presta Shop has a clear, a useful clear cache button right here. Now, um, before concluding, there is something I wanna mention, which is SAS or SCSS, if you are familiar with it. Basically, it's variable-based dynamic CSS, and PrestaShop does support SAS and um, has a Ruby file in the theme folder. 
However, I will not be editing the source as CSS files in this course since not everyone is familiar with it or has Compass installed or is willing to mess with things that are a little less intuitive. Therefore, uh, we will stick to normal CSS, but of course, if you know SAS, um, you can just edit those source files instead of the output ones as I will be doing. Okay, um, enough chit chatting, I guess. Let's get started with lesson one and analyze uh, Press the Shop themes structure. <laughs> 